Greetings, citizens of the internet. I'm Static Buzz, and in this video, we're going to be doing story time with Static. This will be my first in the series. Hopefully, it'll be a long lasting series, but that all depends on you. So, the more comments I get, the more likelihood that I'll continue on with this series. Not to put any pressure on you. But so, how this is going to work is I'm going to tell a story, and you get to decide if you think it is true, fictional, or partially true and something that I added or embellished the story. So that's your three options. True, fictional, or partially true. And you just, when you hear the story and you're done listening to the story, you go down to the comments, put what you think. Now how you're going to know the results is I'm going to put a reveal video in another playlist so that people that come to this playlist don't accidentally see one of those before they see this video. And uh, you'll have that. So subscribe if you want to uh, get notified when that comes up because I'll put it up a couple days after this to give people chance to reply. So anyways, here's the story. So when I was about 16, me and my dad were going to get something to eat. We were driving around in his blue, baby blue, um, Chevy pickup truck. Can't remember if it had the trailer or not, but uh, it doesn't matter. It's not important to the story. And we were going down Beardsley and we were on 19th Avenue in Beardsley and we were going straight to a restaurant or whatever, but the cars were obviously going in front of us because we were at the stoplight. Well, I don't know if the lights changed or what, but there was a big Oldsmobile, big boat car that was turning left. It was going down the street that we were going down. And it started to turn and this other car was coming and it was going through the light. Now, I don't know, like I said, if the lights changed or not. But this car coming in caused this car to swerve and then go into the uh, street light. The, yeah, the street light pole. So since we were still stopped and my, we, we witnessed this, my dad reached in his pocket, grabbed some change, and handed me the change and told me to go call 911. I don't know why he gave me the change because, well, you don't need change to call 911. But he gave it to me anyways. That's just what he did. So I got out of the truck and walked across the, uh, the, 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 the little, little crosswalk. That's the word I'm looking for, crosswalk. So I walked through the crosswalk, went over Circle K, my dad pulled out and went over across the street to go help the car and see if anybody was hurt. So I called, told the lady on the 911 line that uh, everything that had happened. And then I went across the street to see where, what was going on. And, um, I obviously waited for the walk signal because <laughs> I didn't want to be hit myself. So I go across the street. I go around the, the car that they had, which was a, kind of a mid-size sedan-ish family car. And uh, I go to look, and my dad's talking to a boy who was about five or six. He'd sat him down next to an electrical box. They had a little strip of cement around it that the boy could sit on and lean up against the, the, uh, the box. The boy looked like he was all right, a little shaken, because, you know, they slammed into the, the light and their whole front of their car kind of V'd over it, you know, it kind of collapsed and look, shaped the V over the uh, the pole. So when I came around to look inside the car to see if anybody else was in there, see if I could help, his mother, was who was driving, uh, was knelt over holding her ribs. And, uh, you know, I... I figured it was just because she'd smacked her head and everything into the steering wheel because it didn't look like she was wearing her seatbelt. I'm not sure if the seatbelt law was in place at the time, but it's irrelevant to the story. So um, so she's bent over holding her ribs and she's kind of making a wheezing sound. And I was trying to figure out if she was having a hard time breathing or whatnot. And um, what I figured out by watching her was that the wheezing wasn't coming from her mouth. It was coming from where she was holding on her ribs and it turned out that she had a puncture in there and it had what I later learned was a sucking chest wound. I didn't know it at the time, but you know, that's what it was, was sucking chest wound. So instinctively I saw that and, and heard the, as she breathed, the, the wheezing going in and out. And my first instinct was that I needed to plug that up, make it where she could breathe again. So I was looking for something that could seal it, um, like tape or anything anything that I could find. So I went in my dad's truck and in there, all I could find was, uh, I can't remember if it was Cheetos or Doritos, but you know, the single bag of, uh, chips that you get that, that has really good, 
uh, I don't know what the material is, but it's not plastic. It's kind of, uh, you know what I'm talking about. It's the single bags that the shiny is, the shine, it shines inside. Looks almost like tinfoil, but I don't think it's tinfoil. So I grabbed that thinking that it would seal it up. And I rubbed against my shirt to clean it off because I didn't want it to get infected. I mean, we all know that kind of stuff. So then I pr pressed it against her ribs and held it there. And it was a good five minutes before the uh, ambulance showed up. And I just held it there until they got there. And then I told them, you know, what was going on, why I was holding it there. And then I, they took over and I went back into my dad's truck and we drove off. And I, I don't know if I really helped the lady or anything. Um, I just... At least I was there for moral support. And uh, we did the right thing where everybody else kept just driving past and doing their daily thing and not helping. Even the car that turned kept going. He didn't even stop. I'm assuming it was a he. I don't know. I didn't see who was driving. So, yeah, anyways, that's the story. Um, so you get to decide. You think it's true, fictional, or partially true. Put it in the comments. And... Uh, We'll see how it goes. Hopefully there'll be some more of these. I got some more stories to tell. Believe me, I got stories to tell um, that you won't believe even if they are true. So anyways, um, yeah. Put your comments down there. We'll see what happens with those. And in a couple of days, I will post the video that shows you the reveal of what the story really is. So, all right. Until the next video. Uh, I'm going to have to edit that out. All right. So as usual, show your support by clicking like and subscribe. Until next video, take care. Bye-bye now. Static Buzz out.